law isn't going to cut it. There's a lot of laws that, that aren't right. They just aren't right. And uh, as my good friend, uh, Ranker Takano said, that Republicans do, yeah, they do pass bad legislation too. Contrary to what many of you guys might believe, I don't believe that only Democrats pass bad legislation. We've, we've, we've messed up some things ourselves. As a matter of fact, we just had an amendment that I proposed and was put, placed on the National Defense Authorization Act that basically for the last decade or more has authorized the United States military to pick up American citizens on American soil, whisk them off to a foreign land without charges, without counsel, and hold them from an indetermined amount of time. That, by anybody's estimation, is completely unconstitutional. And to continue a process with which our veterans lose their Second Amendment rights because somebody might think that they are a danger, not a court, not a, not a, not a jury of their peers, but a bureaucrat sitting in an office somewhere has made that determination is absolutely 100% wrong, and I really don't care what the law says. I really don't care what the law says. It's wrong. We have programs that show that it's not the simple f act of owning a firearm that causes a problem and increases the likelihood that they're going to a, 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 a veteran who is suffering with PTSD is going to take their life. It's the time with which they think about it and then have access to that weapon. If the weapon's locked away, if it doesn't have the ammunition right next to it, the likelihood that they're going to take their life reduces dramatically. There's a very good program out. It's called Overwatch Program that places time and distance between a veteran and their firearm to make sure that we can drive down the rates of suicide. Mr. Burke, with your previous statement, we've already established that veterans who need a fiduciary to manage their benefits are not always a danger to themselves or others. Current law treats them as being dangerous because they're unable to own a gun if they have a fiduciary. This is just simply false, a false premise. Do you think that a veteran who needs a fiduciary is mentally defective? Mr. Burke? Well, I think the mere placement of somebody in our fiduciary program is based on the premise that they were found to be uh, unable to manage their funds. Mr. Burke, do you believe that a veteran who needs a fiduciary is mentally defective? In most cases, a veteran that's been appointed a fiduciary does have mental impairment or a mental issue that has caused them to be unable to manage their funds. That, that is just stunning to me that you would sit here and say that you think that a veteran who has a fiduciary is mentally defective. Under the current law, procedural due process is violated because a veteran is not afforded a proper pre-deprivation hearing before the imposition of firearm restrictions. I'm very concerned that the VA is treating veterans who need helping managing their money as criminals. Under this policy, anyone who uses the services of a firm to manage their books, a bookkeeping service, would be subject to surrendering their firearms and their Second Amendment rights. This is as ridiculous as it is dangerous. The Supreme Court found in Heller that the Second Amendment guarantees the individual right to possess and carry firearms in the case of confrontation and in the McDonald, the court established the Second Amendment to be a fundamental right applied equally to the federal government and the states. The way the VA is interpreting the statute is blatantly unconstitutional and an affront to the Supreme Court and the separation of powers. Mr. Burke, do you believe in due process? I certainly do, yes, sir. We're losing 21 veterans a day to suicide in this country. Are you concerned that veterans might be wet, less willing to seek care at the VA knowing that it could result in them unfairly losing their Second Amendment rights? I'm concerned any time a veteran doesn't want to seek care or assistance, but I do not believe this process is a deterrent. I do not believe it's a deterrent, and that's why I'm here to Well, I, Mr. Burke, I will tell you that I have had veterans come to me and declare that they are not seeking help because they are concerned about their Second Amendment rights being violated.
And Thank my, you very much. And my point, sir, would be that we can could together work Mr. Burke, I've answer. got veterans who have quoted to me, okay, quoted to me and come to me and said that they are concerned about their Second Amendment rights being violated, and that is not, that is why they are not seeking help. I will uh, 